To everyone listening to this right now, I just want to say hello. My name is Michael Sachi, and this is an invitation. Today, I'm going to be inviting you, the person listening right now, to close your eyes and bow your head and join me in prayer. Let's begin. Dear Lord Jesus, please watch over all of us. We're all in need of your light. Please forgive us for our wrongdoings, for we know no better. Help us to be more like you every day. The person listening to this right now, touch them and let them feel your light. Make changes in their life. Show them your power and show them your love. We need you, Lord. We're lost without you. We all have our issues, the demons we're fighting. Free us from our demons. The same way you fretted, you set us free on that cross. Lord, we thank you. We're grateful. We have extreme gratitude for this experience that you've granted us. For our families, for our friends, for your, your guidance. It's so magnificent. You are the perfect conductor. And you have a plan for us all. Where I want to do this and I want to do that and I want to serve. 
like to continue to walk with you No matter how scary it is sometimes No matter No matter what stands in the way It's no match for the power of the Lord Nothing is Lord forgive me for I have sinned many times And I've made so many mistakes And I've turned away from you I've, I've turned my back on you so many times You never gave up on me You kept coming back Saved my life when I was at my darkest point in my life when I wanted it all to end. You kept knocking at my door even when I wouldn't answer. When I said no, 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 no. God was pursuing me. And if you're listening to this right now, I want you to know that God is pursuing you. That is why you are listening to this right now. Because everything happens for a reason. And God wanted you to hear this message. And God wanted you, God wanted you to listen.
me use my music and my art and my platform and everything to do your work and give back and be a better person and be more like you. Guide me. Help me to be patient and have faith. When I think, oh my God, why am I going through this? Why did God put me through this? Uh, it all ends up making sense in the end. That's what faith is all about. Because I know that every time I doubted you, I looked back and I said, now I see God. Now I know it. Now I know, know what you were doing. I understand it now. I'm stubborn. I'm human. Help me with my faith. Help me with my patience. I'm your servant, Lord. Guide me. Thank you so much. I'm so blessed. I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. I pray for my dad, Lord. Help him with, with everything that he's going through in his life and watch over him and help him to spread your word and to continue spreading your word because he's amazing at it. I take his advice and it helps me so much. I was in such a dark place, but my dad helped me find you. And through him I found the light. I'm still wearing the necklace, the cross necklace that he gave me. The day where he picked me up when I was 5150 and he told me that I wanted to kill myself. So I ended up getting 5150. I was buried in the dark. I wasn't treating myself right. I'm dealing with some uh, emotional things and not in the best way. I was 5150 and um, someone sat next to me when I was in there. Another person who got 5150 in there and they, they had a Bible verse. I was off mushrooms. I was tripping off psilocybin mushrooms. I was scared. I was shaking. I remember and Lord, you spoke to me. You speak to us through others, through situations, through all these things in our lives. And you kept pursuing me. I remember months before that. I went to San Diego and someone came up to me and was trying to hand me a Bible. Everywhere I go, people are trying to hand me Bibles. And you kept trying to speak to me and tell me, hey, I need to use you. I got plans for you. I'm going to lead you to the light. I see you're in the darkness. I was being stubborn about it. But I remember when I got 5150. Someone sat next to me, someone who also got 5150, and they read me a Bible verse about stillness and walking with the Lord. And I remember, I don't remember the exact Bible verse, but I remember reading it, and it helped me. It helped me. You gave me exactly the relief that I needed when I was at that point. And when no one else would help me, even the, the doctors in there, the people who, their job is to help people. Just put people on medication. No, I remember they were denying that guy of his Bible. If he wanted his Bible, they had it in his locker. They wouldn't give it to him. Well, guess what? That guy saved me. And your word could save people who are in facilities like that. They were trying to deny him of his Bible, but the Bible can save people. Medication isn't going to save people with these mental health issues and stuff like that. I remember my dad picked me up from getting 5150 and him. He gave me a conversation about God, and he told me about how God worked in his life, and he said, your best friend is not your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, your parents, your girlfriend, none of that. Your best friend is always God. That's what my dad told me, and he stuck with me. He took his cross necklace off, and he gave me his cross necklace. Because he 
loves you. Jesus means Lord who saves. He's here to save us. I don't know about you, but if someone's here to save me, hey, I'm all for it. That sounds like someone who genuinely cares about me. Right now, the, the Lord is inviting you into his house to come to church this Sunday or grab a Bible and read a verse or pray to him and ask for forgiveness and talk to him and nurture that relationship or begin that relationship. This is your invitation. If you're hearing this right now, even if you've never gave your heart or your life or you've never gave Jesus Christ a shot in your life, here's your chance right now. so much. Thank you for listening. Thank you for praying with me. Thank you for, for hearing my story. Thank you, Lord, for giving me this message to give to others so they can hear this and they can pray with me. So we can praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.
invited me to church, I was like, who cares? You know, I'll try it. If these Christians are too weird or whatever, I'll go to a doctor. And well, it's kind of amazing that you were willing to go to church. I mean, you know, exactly. a lot of people would just be... Even run away from that thought of going to a yeah. church, especially from the world that you were coming from. I get there and the, the pastor starts saying, Jesus is real. He'll come into your life if you invite him in and all the negative stuff can't stay. And I was like, I was listening to him and I was like, I'm going to try this. I went home with my drugs and I just poured my heart out to God. I said, God, these drugs are going to kill me and leave my daughter without a dad. Please, if you're real, come into my life. Give me a new life. encounter with God's love within the next few weeks and and uh, man I just I felt like Jesus came in and put his arms around me I didn't see anything but it was just like it was a life-changing event Feel it in my chest 
twist Every single breath, have mercy on me, Lord I feel it in my core I know you wanna use me to slay demons with your sword Are you real? Yes Do you hear me when I scream? Yes Do you feel me when I cry? Yes Will you feel me with your love? Jesus Christ Radio. Start mingling today. Join the all new ChristianMingle.com for free right now. Jesus Young Thorne devoted his life to Jesus Christ. to hyper pop try some hyper gospel that is disciple real church jesus gang Maybach we read music. the bible every day disciple church jesus gang we read the bible every day start mingling today join the all new christianmingle.com for free right now
just poured a sword of the holy water. Bye bye. Jesus. They ain't believe in us. God did. I've been running from the climb.
Christian women love me. If you're to enter the kingdom of God. Worship and then the famous passage for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. A lot of people end up losing their mind, killing themselves for power because in Hollywood and stuff like that, they move out there and they're like, okay, I'm fulfilling my dream. Fame is not even doctors, they rich and up boom because guess what? All that money don't mean nothing if you ain't got God. I pray all of y'all have an encounter with him and just say amen because like, this is love. Jesus <laughs> Jesus Gang. We read the Bible every day. walk in his will for us then we then we will enjoy our life no cap but if we over here sitting and doing things that we know we ain't supposed to we is not gonna have no joy no peace
God is great. God is love. Stay close to God. Give Him thanks. When you get to a situation that you need help, or every day, just talk to Him. Say, God, I start my day with Your name. I know I give You my praise and worship. I need Your help. And you'll see good things happen every day. And that's what I do. I, I ask God for help and I read my Bible and pray for you guys, pray for myself. I ask for wisdom. Say, God, give me the wisdom I need. I don't know how you make decisions. I know how to do life. But you know how to do life because you made us. And, and help me to do the right thing, make the right decisions, have the right way of thinking. Uh, you know, protect me, provide for me. And he does. You know what? Like any good father, when fathers, you know, want to take care of their kids, guess what? God is the same way, right? He's giving you an example. It's true. And what happens when you ask Him? Because now you don't have to go here, there, there to go there. Because what is the shortest path to, from A to B? straight line, right? We don't want a zigzag, right? Because zigzag is wasting time, right? Zigzag is like, okay, I went there, okay, yes, I had experience. I had that experience, I don't know about, right? Go here, yes. But, you know, that's, but, you know, if you really wanted to go the right path, straight path, smooth path, a blessed path, then God's the source. God has a plan. Decided to give it to the enemy and had 
against God disobeyed the enemy to control. He became the owner. So when I was not Christian, I always say to God, say, God, if Adam and Eve sin, why, why, why is it that I have to pay for it? And later on when I became a Christian, God says, you know what? You're Adam too. You will do the same thing. But you don't have to pay for it. I came down from heaven and paid for it. So you're free now. You start now as a free man. And as like an Adam in the Garden of Eden. Because I give you power over sin. Now do whatever you want to do. You make a decision. To do the wrong, to do the right. And I know you're not perfect. And I know you're going to make mistakes. And I know you give in sometimes. But know that you have power over sin. Although you make decisions the way you want to make decisions. But you're still my child. If you come back to me and ask and ask for forgiveness, I will forgive you. 1 John 1 9. If you confess your sins, He's faithful and just to forgive you all of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, the story of the Bible, what the Bible says, the Word of God is so beautiful. Everything comes together so beautifully. And you know what? It's a message of happiness. It's a message of joy. It's, the mess it's not a message of sadness. It's not say, okay, the hell with you now. What if you did this? You're done. No. It says, I am here for you. And I never leave you. I never forsake you. That's so beautiful about Jesus. Amen. I've been Christian for 33 years. Every day is a new day. It's not like you're buying a car, but you know, if you buy a car, you buy a house, after one get old and say, oh, okay, maybe. But Jesus never get old in my life for the 33 years that I've been Christian, and I will be, I don't know how many more years, but, but I know that that hasn't changed for me. Because his message is always that message of love. So you explored other religions. I was Muslim for 27 years of my life. Professed to be Muslim. But at about 23, stopped following Muslim religion because of what happened in Iran. Um, but it was, you know, with the religion of Islam and what they did. And then I gave up on the Christian Muslim. And then I was introduced to Christ on age 27. I was first introduced to Christ. In a Bible study in Norm uh, Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, not Norman, uh, Edmond, Oklahoma. It was like a clubhouse. We went there. The guy came in to visit me invited us to a Bible study. And I said, is this about politics, you know, because Iran, you know, people. And I said, no. I said, can I bring my wife and my daughter when I was six months old? I said, yeah, sure. It's a potluck, but you don't have to bring anything. When we went, walked in, Amir and Adi, Amir and Dolores Adibiazdi were, yeah, were there. And then they introduced us to the Bible and Rahim, the guy, and his wife Sima was also there. They introduced us to the Christianity. And we read the Bible. The first verse I read when I opened up the Bible says, It's not what you eat makes you unclean, it's what you say because it comes from your heart. Wow. And I said, Wait a minute. In Muslim religion, say you drink alcohol, you become unclean. Why is that? My mom and dad sometimes conflict about this, my dad drinking and my mom being so religious. And I said, you know, it always bothered me. But now, why did they have to argue about this? Because God says, it's not what you make, eat you, it's not make you unclean, it's what you say. And it, it stick with me. And then, and then, Later they give us the Bible. They talk about love your God, love your enemy, and love your God, and love your neighbor as much as yourself. And then, and then I start reading the Bible, and then watch the video of Christ when he dies on a cross.
Christ. Have you watched that video, Life of Christ? Uh -huh. Have you? No. Watch that. Watch that. It, 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 it will bring everything together for you with the message of Christ. It's based on Luke chapter 16. It shows the life of Christ. I will send you the video. It's on the uh, Bible list. You have a Bible list, right? Yeah, I think so. It's on the video, it's on there. It's the life of Christ. And um, so... So I, 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 uh, I start reading and then every time I read the Bible, the tears will come down, right? And I, I, you know what Jesus did for me, and when He went on a cross, He died. And I said, God, I, yeah, I am a sinner. I need a savior. And that was my. I nailed down and asked Him to come to my heart. And later, God wants me to get baptized. It was, it was something that God was just telling me. You gotta get baptized. It was just like God put in my heart. Get baptized, get baptized. And then your mom and both of us got baptized. We have meeting, we have pictures. And we got baptized. That's crazy. It was amazing. We were the first it's crazy how you could converted people in our family to from Muslim to Christianity. Oh, I, I didn't, God did, but you know, it's like my, my first interaction with Jesus is when I was in the apartment. I was graduate from university. I was waiting for your mom to come to start a life together. They were stuck in Turkey for three months. They couldn't get a visa. Your mom was rejected twice. The following day was the day that they go there to get a final answer, right? I was praying to God. I cried out to God. I said, God, Jesus, if you're there, why don't you do something? I was crying out to God. I was like running, walking in my room and talking to God, right? That night I slept. Michael, when I was sleeping, sleeping bag, right? At that time, I, I, I felt like there was like entity, like a bright, shiny light right there. That was telling me God heard you. And then the following day, when I when I woke up that night, I was very f fearful. But I slept, and then I, 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 the next day, when I did talk to, and call and talk to your mom and call grandma, I said, "You're gonna get your visa today." I said, "How do you know?" I said, "I know. I had a dream last night that you're gonna get your visa, right?" And what happened, Michael? The guy is supposed to interview your mom. The same guy that he did reject her twice, asked for more paperwork. This guy was went on a on a meeting, and the, it was a substitute. The new guy was very friendly. Oh, okay. I'm telling you, ask your mom. And I then, would have never before. And then and then the guy said yes, go. God has his own ways. And. Uh, she was asked, what are you going to study? Is she going to study biology? And she looked at the grades and said, oh yeah, your grades are looking good. And then what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to come back to um, in my country after I finish school, things like that. But she came here, we got married, started a life together, and that was it. What I'm saying is God has his own ways. And when you get to a situation that you really need help, and you always need help. Every day we need help. We can always start with God. I submit to you today, Lord. Have your way with me. Use me for your glory. If there's a person in need, I can help. Give me that whisper that I need to go talk to this person. Help them, whatever, financially, physically, pray for them. Do something, right? Or even listen to them. You might be just listening to someone. And a lot of times when I do that, at the end of the day, I say, Oh yeah, that's exactly what happened. I was used by God today. So anyways, it's just these are the experiences I had over these 33 years. And when grandma find out, you know, they were all mad for many months.
thoughts, no conversation. But we didn't push. We said, we're going to church, you're coming. Yeah, no, yes, son. Grandma, usually Grandma Fairy would come because she didn't want to stay home, right? And he said, you know, it's so beautiful. You guys are having so much fun. You do this and there's nothing wrong with these people, right? And eventually, after many trips, when Mona and your mom and Matthew went to Iran one time, everybody heard about us, that we are Christians. When they left, the government was asking my mom to find out why your son is a Christian now. Why the government of Iran? Yes. So they asked grandma to go to like an FBI center there, like an internal investigation. Security. Oh yeah, and then she was under a lot of pressure. So the good thing was that she was she was getting a, a green card. I applied for her after my citizenship because of the immediate family. She was able to come just like that. So she left Iran without anybody know and flew to America. And then she got the paperwork in Turkey. And she was able to come and she came into America with green card. And after a few years that she really studied the Bible, it took her five years. She became a Christian. And guess who baptized Grandma? You. I was in the water when she was baptized. Yes. She was. She said, "I want you to be in the water with me." She, where was that point where she decided that she was Christian? She read the Quran. And she read the Quran for thirty times. She read the Bible many, many times, and she said, "I know for fact this is the truth." Jesus is the way, the right, the way, the truth, and life. And he is the only way, and I believe that um, I want to trust in Jesus. And she prayed. She received Christ as her Savior. She put both of them side by side and said, this is the truth. And the Bible says, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And she was free because of reading the Bible. That's why I have a Bible in my car, give to people. I said, you know what? You don't want to read it now, don't do it. But if you get to a time in your life that you don't have no way out and you need help, read the Bible and pray and ask God. Ask in the name of Jesus. And that's the last thing I tell them. And I said, adios. Because God is going to bring this situation in their life through the decisions they're making, but he's there watching them, right? It's just there, okay, okay, yeah, you're almost there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. And then boom. All of a sudden, the light comes on. Right? And then they say, oh, I want to know more. Okay, here's the, oh yeah, I say, hey, give me, Michael, give me, oh, I remember, what is that, what is that? <laughs> they look for it, boom. They start reading it, right? And guess what? The truth is there. That verse, that passage that they want to hear is right there, right there. It's right there for them to see it. And that's what's for me, you know. So, that's exactly what happens. God, nothing is coincidence. It's just everything happens because like you said, God has a plan. God orchestrates everything. God is, 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 is and you know what? God is the perfect conductor. He's conducting everything, right? Think about it. The solar system, over seven billion people. Look at the order in the solar system. The sun, seasons, the nights and days. You know, all of that. He's, he's such a great conductor because he's the creator. He's the almighty. For us as human beings, sometimes say, you know what? I think I know more than God. Just because now we have the technology, you know, we can drive or we can think about, you know, because when we eat from the, the tree of knowledge and good, we would be like God, right? That's what, you know, we died spiritually, but we became like God. It's like God created us in His own image. So we had the characteristics, but now we want to be like Him. We want to act like Him. We want to be, 
you know, and then God says, okay, you make decisions. I want you to be free to make decisions and all of that. Life stories of other people. David was a sinner. Abraham was a sinner. Moses was a sinner. Only Jesus was perfect. Mother Mary, well, you know, he was picked by God, but it was not like he needed a savior. In the video that um, you're going to watch later, it says, Mother Mary says, my soul rejoices in my Savior. 